Justin. We're here at the Reebok Japan headquarters in central Tokyo with Dieter Havro, the president of Reebok Japan and Anaheim University. Dieter, how long have you been in Japan? I've been for almost exactly 12 years now. And what brought you here originally? Got here originally with uh, Coca-Cola. Worked for them in Europe for a few years, got transferred here and worked for Coca-Cola with the bottlers quite a bit for seven years in Japan. Uh, how did you become the president of Reebok Japan? After Coca-Cola went uh, to Gap for a couple of years, they got a very successful business here in Japan, and from Gap then moved on to Adidas. Sh that was shortly after Adidas had acquired Reebok on a global basis, and that was about three, three and a half years ago, and I took over Reebok uh, a little over a year ago. What are the main challenges about running uh, Reebok Japan? Reebok in Japan is in a very interesting situation because it's, as a brand, quite well known because of the past success we've had with, uh, with aerobics in particular, very well known with women. That, uh, over the last 10 years, has been a very different picture. The other big brands, global brands, as well as a couple of strong local brands, have captured a lot of market share. So we're a relatively small player in this country. But we've got some very, very interesting product categories that are going to put us in a very interesting competitive position. One of the things that makes us different is you see a lot of companies right now suffering from the economic crisis. And everybody in the industry is. We have a couple of very unique aspects that actually do allow us to grow in spite of all that. The Japanese market is, uh, is very unique um, because essentially the Japanese consumer is the most demanding, the most sophisticated consumer on the planet. And that makes for very interesting competition and that means our teams have to be unusually diligent, unusually creative. And we've certainly come up and, and met that challenge with the products that we have in what we call our toning category as well as our Taikon, both footwear and apparel categories. Okay, is the Taikon product unique for Japan? The Taikon product actually is invented in Japan and uh, it's becoming quite popular in other countries as well. It originally started with, uh, Taikon means body core. And the whole purpose of it, and it came from running, we've developed it with Kin San, a famous running marathon coach, he's got several Olympians in his stable. The idea is to focus on the body core. Right? So essentially, to put it very simply, to use the body most efficiently. Started with running shoes and we expanded into apparel and the new generation of apparel that we have now is uh, clocking up very impressive results in our, in our science lab tests. Basically, the, this generation has one key focus and that's to make your body perform better. And there's a number of companies out there making claims like that. What has us excited is that it really is a product that measures up against the scientific tests that we have thrown at it. So it directly creates flexibility benefits. It has posture benefits, which is a very big topic, becoming a big topic in Japan. And most importantly, and the most easily measured, when you look at what Taikan does for you, but when you perform in terms of intense sports situations, it actually gives you 7% more oxygen intake. All measured in the lab and what performance athlete wouldn't want 7% more oxygen. Now we've also started to measure it in other sports and here's where we're surprising ourselves. Because this product has so much potential we're now beginning to measure in a variety of different sports and we're literally finding new benefits in different areas. We were measuring it in golf the other week and much to everybody's surprise, we found that we did we did this with a golf pro in a, with, with a sister company that has a, a scientific lab to measure all things golf. The golf pro's normal hip rotation radius is 48%. This basically without Taika. Putting on a Taika apparel, he immediately went from 48% to 65%. So that gives you more swing power as well as more accuracy because you have you essentially you create more space. 
And it's those kinds of things that we're now going to explore, because if you get that benefit in golf, then we think there's going to be benefits in sports like baseball, in ice hockey, cricket, which is another big business for Reebok globally. So we're quite excited as you can see about this one. Can you explain to us specifically what Taikon is? Love to. Taikon basically started with a running shoe, and here the simple concept is to force the body slightly forward when running, and so basically it gives you a slightly forward momentum, and that leads to a more efficient use of your body. That's the simple explanation. We've got technical product guys that can give you the half hour okay. version. But we went from there to product, to apparel, and that's where it gets really interesting, because this is basically a belt system built into the apparel. You see it here in the back. The first thing you'll notice when you put it on is it stretches your shoulders, your shoulder blades backwards, gives you better posture, better breathing. The same thing in the front, particularly with this emphasis on the diaphragm, stomach muscles, and that's part of what generates the 7% additional oxygen intake. The complete version comes with the bottom part as well, and in combination those two, when you wear them, give you that quite increased flexibility. We've tested this with literally everybody that's come to our trade show, videotaped them, photographed them, and seven out of ten people get almost half to a full hand more flexibility just bending over, just by putting the product on. This is sort of the professional athlete's version, all in one piece. It's black, so it's a little more difficult to see the belts built in. But what they do is, with the way these bands are positioned, they focus your muscles, the key muscles. They, we've got, basically, we, we've tested everything in the lab here. and looked at which muscle groups are emphasized, which are de-emphasized. And what makes this such an interesting product is that it emphasizes those muscle groups that support the body core, and hence the performance improvements, and the flexibility and posture benefits. And hence Taikon. And hence Taikon, body core. Okay. Yep, tai Karada and Kan Miki. That's a little Japanese. The distinction that most people jump to the conclusion Khan is from feeling. We do think the product feels very good, but the, the Khan character is actually a Mickey for core, body core. When we talk about this, for example, to um, people that are steeped in martial arts, they immediately get it because it's about posture, it's about breathing, it's about using your body core. And you're using the same brand name for this product overseas as well? It is, yes, Reebok Taikan is how you'll find it overseas as well. Not so much in the US yet, but they're starting to get interested. Peter, how do you position a brand like Reebok in Japan? We've given that quite a bit of thought, um, particularly early last year as we looked at how do we bring Reebok back to a significant position in Japan. And for us, the answer is very clear. We want to be a very different, a very unique brand that has a different connection with the consumer. When you look at the industry, basically everybody has so far the same business model. They all produce more or less decent product. They then invest in a lot of athletes, teams, clubs. We think that's a little boring, quite frankly. We want to do something a lot more interesting, and that means we want to be much closer to the consumer with products that create real benefit. So that's where we're putting our money in the development of the product. You heard me talk about. Taikan, we bought Taikan a moment ago. The other key line that we're now developing, that we've been very successful with this year already in Japan, is we bought Easy Tone. Those are basically walking shoes, exercise shoes where you don't need to exercise, is I think the easiest way to explain it. Two balance pawns in the soles create an inherent degree of instability, and this is probably the best way to, to show it, showcase that. This little wiggle is something that's unique to this shoe. Only to our Easy Tone shoe can do that for you. And what it does is, because of this instability, when the wearer walks, the muscles in the leg all the way up to the buttocks are constantly activated. 
So you get a lot more muscle use out of it simply because of these balance ponds that are built in. So that's the second big area that we are, how we're differentiating. The way we're getting that message across is again different. We don't want to do the big athlete thing. We want to give people the opportunity to experience the product. And we've been very successful with that with EasyTone, Taikan as well, and now that we're going into a broader distribution for Taikan starting December, we'll, we'll see that across many sports. Peter, how would you get to become the president of a foreign company in Japan, and what are some of the things that would help you to uh, along the way? See, there's a lot of, obviously, a lot of KHK, a lot of foreign companies in Japan, and different industries you, you want to manage differently, I imagine, and I've been in, in several different industries now. What, what makes this position unique is we have to be very much in tune with the consumer and there's several different demographics as well as who we call our customers. Those are wholesalers, meaning our wholesale business, which is the large retail chains like Xavier, Alpen, Sports Authority, ABC Mart, department stores, and a number of smaller businesses that we reach through wholesalers primarily. So you, you have essentially two very different groups that you need to deal with and you have to offer them something unique. And that, I think, is important for business in Japan, in any industry, and it's probably common across all industries. You have to be different, you have to be unique. And whether you're the market leader, the industry leader, or whether you're a relatively small player, you have to figure out where's your niche, where can you grow from? What makes you attractive? What is the product proposition? that you have for the consumer that's unique and different and exciting. And that's where we're getting great response against these three key categories that we've got. Our classics business, palm freestyle, our easy tone shoe for women, and then Taikan, the performance enhancing product focusing on the body core. Very unique, very different way of coming going to market as well. Okay. But on a on a very personal level, what what are the kinds of things that would help uh, one to become the CEO of a, uh, a multinational apparel company in Japan? Basic leadership skills. My background is uh, I've gone to Thunderbird, got a master's in international management, which you need all the business basics. Um, different leaders come from different. Uh, disciplines, whether it's finance, marketing, sales, doesn't really matter so much as the people skills you bring to the table. People skills in terms of how do you lead your existing organization, how do you motiv motivate them, how do you get them excited, passionate about the direction you're taking as a business, as a brand, and then how, you, how do you bring that excitement over to the customers and to the consumers. Can you tell us a little bit how you uh, motivate your staff or how you We've, we've got uh, basically what I think is, is the, this, the key is you've got to be honest all the time. You've got to deal with the hard facts of life, you've got to deal with the fun things and you've got to celebrate success. And being a small company that has gone through a turnaround, we obviously have had quite a bit of success to celebrate and we're focusing on creating a lot more of that. But you also always have to be very clear about what the challenges are, what the risks are that you're facing, and get the entire team focused on dealing with those. How do you identify high performers in your organization? Communication. The, you have your, your standard performance reviews, but I don't think that's enough. By the time sort of the annual review comes around, you have to know already what the situation is. And the key to that is communication, both formal and much more importantly informal. I think for any leader in a business nowadays, no matter how large or small, you need to be in touch with people all the time, at all levels. So you get a lot of indirect input and you get a feel for where you've got your strengths, your weaknesses, where you need to focus on development, where you need to encourage, where you need to push, and where you need to prod a little. What advice would you give to an aspiring professional? Find a business environment that fits 
your personality and your personal needs because that will be the quickest way for you to find your potential. What I mean by that is there are many, many attractive companies out there, many attractive industries. Do your research and find out what gets you excited, not just about a product, not just about a brand, but about the people that you want to work with, the environment that you want to be in. If you, get, if you give yourself good grades against those questions in terms of the research that you've done, you'll find an environment that really brings out the best in you. Dear, what advice do you have for current or future MBA takers? Basically, the, the key thing to focus on is, naturally, do your classwork. Any business is going to want to see performers. So if you perform well in your courses, that's a big plus. But what's going to make you successful in business is really the, the group work that you do in your MBA classes. No matter what kind of role you have in the group work that you do, and I think most MBA courses have a lot of group work, that really is a testing ground for how you'll interact in a business environment. So whether you're the leader of the group, whether you're a regular member of the group, focus on making that successful. Focus on learning what it takes to be a productive member of a group, of a team, because that's what it takes to be successful in business as well.